Okay, let's find the surface area of every object that I might care about. Well, let's look at some of the objects that we've just discussed. How about a prism? How about an hexagonal prism? Zomp. Zomp. I don't know why I struggle with this so much. Uh -huh. So, what is the surface area? Well, the surface area is just the area of all the faces of the prism. And the idea is to decompose this prism into its so-called uh, net. Uh, and the net is just a, a 2D picture of all of the uh, faces of the object sort of laid out. And there are so many really fascinating and interesting. When I used to teach geometry, it was one of my most fun days where I let the students draw all of the possible crazy kind of nets that we can get from, and then at the end of one of these must be the other base. Um, uh, but there is one particular net which ends up being useful, and uh, that's this one, or at least useful for coming up with a formula. Uh, and here is the thing, and we put him here. And then there are going to be five more of these. And they can be really anywhere. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's six. OK. So uh, whatever the base of this hex gun is, let's just call it B. And this is also B. Um, and what's nice about this particular way of drawing the net is that we just get this one big rectangle. And well, what are the dimensions? of this rectangle, well, this dimension is just the original height of the prism, just h. And this other dimension, this one here, um, well, this green line was the one which wraps all the way around the hexagon. So this is p, the perimeter of the hexagon. And uh, thus, the <coughs> um, formula for the volume of this thing is going to be twice the area of the base plus the perimeter of the base times the height of the, the prism. Uh, and this is just a way of calculating the, the surface area of any prism. And of course, if I want to find the surface area of a cylinder, then what do I do? Well, I can also just produce the net. The net for a cylinder has the circle and this guy, and then another circle. Uh, and so if I begin with a cylinder with radius r and height h, then what kind of object is produced? Well, each of these circles has area pi r squared. This dimension is the circumference of the circle, 2 pi r, and this dimension is the height of the cylinder, um, thus making the area of this thing 2 pi r h. Yeah. So I have a pi r squared, I have another pi r squared, and I have another 2 pi r h. So the surface area um, of a cylinder is really like the, it's really twice the base plus the so called lateral area, the area on the side. And the area of the base is just pi r squared, and the lateral area is just. 2 pi r h. So that's the formula for the surface area of a, of a cylinder. All right, um, pretty much two more to go. One is pyramids. All right, let's talk about the surface area of a pyramid. Well, how do you do it? Uh, duh, you just do the same thing. You make the net. So if I have some, say, hexagonal pyramid, how might I take care of this? Well, what turns out to be relevant now is not the height so much as, well, okay, let's draw the net. So if we draw the net, clearly there will be a hexagon, but then also we're going to have all these triangles. Zomp, 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 zomp. Pictures are getting worse and worse. Uh, and so really the, the job of finding the surface area of this uh, is just finding the area of all these figures. Well, if it is a regular um, pyramid, which is about the only kind that we can uh, 
find the surface area for easily, then that means that this vertex is lying just above the, uh, the center of the regular polygon, which, which is part of the definition of, um, of, a, of a regular pyramid. And if that's true, then these triangles over here on the net are all isosceles and all congruent to each other. And so I really just need to find the area of this triangle. Well, I can find the area of this triangle if I know two things. The height of the triangle, um, and we have a name for this thing, we call it L, the slant height of the pyramid. It's the shortest path a bug would take starting at the vertex of the pyramid if he wanted to get um, down to the, uh, the, the bottom of, of the face that he's on. You would just go straight down the center with a perpendicular. Uh, and what is this little bit here? Well, this little bit is S, one side length of the hexagon. And so what we see is that the surface area of one of these pyramids is going to be the area of the base plus um, a bunch of these triangles. Well, how many triangles? Uh, I guess the answer is n of them, if it's an n-gon. And what will be the area of each of these triangles? Well, it will be one half, the base of the triangle, which is s, the side length of the, 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 um, of the polygon, times l, the slant height of the, uh, of the um, pyramid. And what's kind of nice is that these three numbers together, or at least n times s, um, the length of each side of the polygon times the number of sides, is just the perimeter. And so to the extent that you'd like formulas, there's a nice formula for the surface area of a pyramid. It's the area of the base plus 1 half PL, where P is the perimeter of the base. OK, and that's kind of cool because it will enable me very quickly, if I so desire, to get the formula for the surface area of a cone, which is considered to be quite a hard uh, task. Uh, one way we might think of to find the surface area of a cone is that a cone is really just like a pyramid. And this formula must hold. Um, so what does the formula say? The formula says that it's the area of the base plus 1 half PL. But now, if I have a cone, well, what the slant height of the cone is just going to be this guy. Um, and what is the perimeter of the base? Well, that's just the circumference. Um, so the base of the cone is just pi r squared. And this is 1 half times, well, what is the perimeter? That's just 2 pi r. No. Uh, and so there is this formula, which you see, which we got just by treating the cone like a pyramid, uh, like a, um, yeah, like a pyramid uh, which is it's pi r squared plus pi r l. All right, this is probably the best, most intuitive way to do this. It is not the only way, uh, and you may have seen something else in another class. So let's just maybe just very quickly uh, talk about that. Uh, there's another way to do it, and the other way to do it would be to just draw the net. All right? So that seems to be the principle that, that, uh, that, that works. Right? So let's, what does the net for a cone look like? Well, we have the circle, and then we have this kind of like kind of thing. Yeah, I think I did that about right. Um, so if we label this, we have that this is the radius of the circle. And if that's true, then I know the arc length of that um, I, know, I know the length of that arc. The length of that arc must be uh, 2 pi r. And I'm also given that I also know that that is L. That's the slant height of the cone. So, um, well, I think then I can just directly, via geometry, calculate the area of this sector. Uh, how can I do that? Well, I know that the length of the arc is proportional uh, to the area. Uh, and so, if I want to find the area of this object, perhaps what I will do is I'll just call it x temporarily. 
and set up a little proportion, this seems to be the easiest way to me, which is that x is to the area of the entire large circle, which would be pi l squared, as the length of this, uh, as, as the length of the arc of this sector, which I know to be 2 pi r, is to the length of the entire uh, arc length of the large circle, not drawn, which would be um, 2 pi l. Yeah, and we get some happy cancel, um, and what I'm sort of, fi oh, and then I can even cancel an l and a squared, and so I'm left with, um, let's see, x over pi l equals r, or x is pi r l. So, just drawing the net, we can also just directly compute that the, uh, and this of course is the lateral area of a cone that we found a minute ago. Um, all right, that is everything except for one thing remains, and that is the surface area of a sphere. This is maybe the hardest one, and therefore also the coolest. All right, how do you find the surface area of a sphere? All right, well, this is what we do. First, I'm going to draw a giant sphere. And we kind of have this kind of situation. All right. And the idea is I need to know how much area covers the whole surface of the sphere. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to partition this surface. And I'm going to partition it up into triangles. But not exactly triangles, because I want them to cover the entire surface. And of course, if I have actual triangles, there's no way I can cover the surface of this thing. So I'm going to do it kind of like, um, well, you'll see. I'll try to just draw. So here's a thing, and then here's another thing. And I want to do these in such a way that they kind of tessellate. But then each of them is going to be kind of curved a little, in a little bit, um, although my curvature is kind of all terrible. Again, um, if you're a real person, you pick up these kind of art skills of like perspective and stuff that I do not have. Um, and they should kind of look bigger as they get closer to the center. Um, but are you sort of feeling this a little bit? That what we have are these sort of many, 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 many kind of like triangle type things um, that are, uh, that will, if I were to do it enough, cover the entire surface of the sphere. Alright, if you're happy with that, I am. Uh, and now, here is what we do. Uh, we are going to just consider one of these in isolation. Let's all suppose that they're congruent too, because that's nice. Um, so I'll, let's consider one of these little guys in isolation. Um, well, uh, what I now do is I make this the base of a pyramid who, um, whose height, well, I connect to the center. And what I have here now is this, um, this triangular prism. Um, except it's not really a triangular prism because the base is not really a triangle and its height is basically r, the radius, although not quite. And I guess the other idea here is that this, the, the smaller the um, tiles that I use, the less curvy any one of them will be. So again, with fake calculus, I can imagine that, um, that if, as I let the number of triangles approach infinity, then these things, these um, shapes uh, these curvy triangles will actually approach real triangles. All right, well, if you are willing to accept this, now we can make this quite amazing argument. Um, the amazing argument we can make is that the volume of the entire sphere is composed of the volumes of these many, many, many um, triangular pyramids. And so I can just add them all up. And, oh, let's just say that the, that the area of each of them is um, B. B for area of the base of that kind of triangle thing. 
All right, well then, what is the, area, what is the volume of one of these? We know how to find the volume of a um, triangular pyramid. It's one-third the area of the base times the height, and the height is r, the radius of the sphere. Yeah. Okay, that's just one of them, right? And now we just have more of them, right? So another one-third br for the other guy and another guy. And so we have kind of a lot, a lot, lot, lot of these pyramids. Enough so that when we add them all up, um, we get the total volume. Well, now what I'm going to do is just factor. I'm going to factor out a one-third r. And if I factor out a one-third r of each of these expressions, which individually represent the volumes of these triangular um, prisms, then I get b plus b plus, I get a lot of b's. Well, what is the sum of the areas of all of those bases, of all of those curvy triangles? Well, they completely tessellate the sphere, so that is in fact just the surface area of the sphere. And so we have that the volume of the sphere is one-third times r times the surface area of the sphere. This is kind of incredible. Um, and, well, I know the volume of a sphere because we did that a half an hour ago. The volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. And so, as the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, and the volume of a sphere is also 1 third r times the surface area of the sphere, multiply both sides by r, multiply both sides by 3, and I get that the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. All right, this concludes the, I called it crash course, but it's really like an hour um, discussion uh, on how to find the area of every single object, how to find the volume of every single object, and how to find the surface area of every single object. There's not one single thing that we did that couldn't have been done and perhaps shouldn't have been done in a normal high school geometry class. So if you didn't get it the first time around, here it was. I hope you enjoyed it. I also hope you watched it on two times speed. I apologize for the bad pictures. And I'll see you later.